Hi, everybody, and welcome to Oxitec's fourth uh, public educational webinar uh, in conjunction with Delta Mosquito Vector Control uh, District. Uh, today, um, we have Mustafa Davoun, uh, uh, General Manager at, at Delta MVCD, and myself, Kevin Gorman, uh, Chief Development Officer at Oxitec. Uh, welcome, Mustafa. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, we will proceed um, <clears throat> with this uh, with this particular uh, uh, webinar, which is focused on the Oxitec technology and how it works. Uh, but Mustafa's here uh, and uh, will be uh, joining in on the Q and A. I'll take most of the presentation today, but but please can everybody get their questions in um, to the chat box, and uh, we'll we'll load them up and uh, answer those at the end. Uh, questions relating to the topic uh, will be prioritised, and uh, but but please do uh, fire some questions over towards Mustafa as well, uh, as he's kindly uh, joined us today, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be glad to answer those along with myself at the end. Uh, the webinars are open to everybody. Uh, they're recorded. Uh, we put them on YouTube afterwards and make them available for everybody after the event, um, and. <clears throat> As I mentioned, questions relating to the webinar topic will be prioritised, and sometimes we end up batching the questions if there's several on a particular topic. If time runs out, uh, we have an hour, of course, uh, for the presentation and then for the Q&A session. But if time runs out, uh, you can also put your questions in writing and send them to info at oxytech.com, and we will answer them uh, by email. Uh, we sometimes publish the questions and answers in writing after the event, and put those online uh, as, ex as resources and references for external use. Uh, and so onto today's ag agenda. Um, it's, uh, as I mentioned, uh, relates to Oxitec's technology. We'll start with a little introduction about Oxitec, uh, just a couple of slides there, nothing too heavy. Uh, and then we'll talk about the technology itself, the platform technology and how that might apply to different insects and then focus down into Aedes aegypti uh, and then talk a little bit further about that Aedes aegypti mosquito turning into a product and what that needs to do to make sure that uh, we are uh, making that accessible to everybody. And then we'll uh, fire into that question and answer session at the end. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the first uh, slide of the presentation and uh, uh, it's an introduction to Oxitec and, and we're starting here with our mission. Um, Oxitec's mission is really about um, making impact. It's really about improving uh, the, the future for humans uh, by tackling some of the world's greatest challenges. Uh, this is in, in public health as well as agriculture and uh, animal health as well. Um, but it really is about impact. It's about humans. It's about making a difference and providing something that's sustainable and, uh, and, and, and right for the future, um, uh, real contemporary solutions to bi biological pest control solutions uh, to current world problems. Um, the company has been around now for around about 20 years, just over 20 years. It was 2002 uh, when it spun out of Oxford. Uh, we've grown, uh, we're about 250, just over 250 personnel around the world now at the moment, and we have uh, significantly over 15 nationalities represented amongst that workforce. Well over 20 PhDs in the, just in the R&D team and, uh, and over 10 languages spoken. We pride ourselves on our very diverse culture and, uh, and know that it's a huge asset to us. And we have R&D facilities uh, in the UK. Uh, that's our headquarters, if you like. Uh, but we have a large facility in Brazil. And we also have facilities in the US, um, uh, in California, uh, which, we're, which is our newest one. And we're just about to open that shortly. We have lots of experience uh, in the company, uh, right the way through from the genetics and the biotech at the start of the, of, uh, uh, the design of, that, of, of those genetic our products right at the start of the process, if you like, all the way through the characterization of the insects, uh, the field uh, aspects, you know, uh, so that includes ecology as well as biology, and then through product development, 
into the product line, product process, uh, and then right the way through uh, all the regulatory and compliance aspects. It's a very broad team, lots of people wearing lots of different hats, um, a huge wealth of experience right the way across all the different sectors. So on to a little bit about the technology itself. Um, it's a biological uh, control technology, as I've mentioned. And so it really is, um, you know, one of the one of the unique uh, technologies out there at the moment for public health. Um, biological tools, you know, live products to control pest insects have been around in agriculture uh, for quite a long time. Uh, but it's not been something that has really taken off in public health uh, to the same extent. The, we'll talk about the products and the technology um, uh, a little bit in a little bit more detail shortly. But you know the headlines here are that you know it's a mating-based technology. It's specific and targeted at a particular species because of that. The release of our uh, insects uh, is able, and I'll explain how later, to, to bring down that pest population. Um, it's a self-limiting technology, so it can't persist in the environment. It can contribute to resistance management by, by diluting resistance genes that are out there uh, with susceptibility. It's operationally very efficient. Uh, that makes it cost-effective and simple to use, and it means that it's scalable as well. And it's, um, the, the, it's, it's a genetically modified uh, product, but those modifications are very well characterized and understood uh, genes, which produce just two simple proteins, uh, both of which are safe, non-toxic and non-allergenic. It doesn't persist in the environment. And so once Oxitec releases have stopped, uh, it's, it's not long before there's no environmental footprint left and, um, and and that's all fully traceable because we have a marker inbuilt into those insects so we can see them uh, disappear from the field. And then it's uh, broadly applicable as well. There's this, this can be applied to not just to insects, but to all sorts of, of, of organisms uh, of, with pest status. Uh, we're focused particularly at the moment on public health, agriculture and animal health, but this really has a, a broad application possibilities. Here are some of the uh, insects that we work on, uh, as well as ticks. Uh, uh, we have mosquitoes, flies, beetles, moths, uh, and ticks. Um, so we have example products or, or candidate products for e in each of these categories. And they help us provide solutions for public health, agriculture, and animal health, as I mentioned. Um, in public health, we're focused on neglected tropical diseases with our Aedes aegypti. And so that uh, that really is uh, to combat diseases such as dengue and Zika, chikungunya, yellow fever, all transmitted by Aedes aegypti, as well as other species. Uh, and we're also quite focused on malaria transmission now. And we're working with the Gates Foundation to produce two different Anopheles products uh, to combat real key vectors of malaria in specific areas around the world. In agriculture, and I won't dwell too long on, on this, uh, we're heavily into uh, to, to products that will help um, real challenges here in food security, and they're mainly in the broad acre sector, uh, corn, soybeans, uh, cotton and sugar cane, uh, but also uh, in horticulture too. And last of all, we're into livestock now with, uh, with a cattle tick um, project um, to, 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 to prevent uh, uh, losses of, of, of beef in the cattle industry. We've had, uh, as I mentioned, over 20 years of, 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 of progress in the company. And we've been out in the field now for over 10 years, and we've had regulatory decisions all the way around the world, um, which are uh, supporting our field work, but also our laboratory work, um, uh, interventions, uh, technical opinions, 
um, right the way across our portfolio and, and pretty much on most continents now. Uh, I draw your attention uh, to Brazil. Uh, down at the bottom there, the purple circles, you can see our commercial approval for 5034. Um, this uh, this is a great milestone and came on the back of a commercial approval for, for our previous product, 5138. So both 80 digit two mosquitoes. We've also got commercial approval in Brazil for one of our agricultural pests, uh, pest products. And then also, of course, uh, in the USA, uh, we've done um, releases now. Uh, we're in our second year of releases in Florida with our 5034 product. And of course, we have a federal approval for use in California, and we're hoping for state approval uh, in due course, which would allow us to complete the project uh, in collaboration with Mustafa and his team at Delta. Lots of partners. Uh, it's something that we've always relied on. Uh, we are great at producing insects and, 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 and biological products but there's nobody better than local partners to help implement that um, to to generate traction with the stakeholders and uh, if there's one thing we've learned it's that uh, community engagement and locally delivered stakeholder engagement is absolutely critical to success and uh, here you can see an array of partners that we have uh, both academic uh, research partners but also uh, development partners as well as funding agencies. So that's a little bit about the technology. Let's talk a little bit more uh, specifically about the Mosquito. Uh, I would say that most of our products are the same. They're, they're a similar platform put into different insects. There are some slight nuances there. Um, but all of them are the same mating based technology with two uh, particular genes inserted which produce two proteins uh, those proteins uh, i'll come on to shortly uh, but for now you know some of the key benefits uh, mentioned already are that we're targeted we're non-allergenic we're safe non-toxic uh, and we're self-limiting in the environment it's traceable because of the marker and you should always remember that we do male only releases you know and the reason for that is that we target insects where males aren't causing uh, the problem uh, in the case of mosquitoes it's females that bite people and females that transmit diseases uh, males don't bite people uh, they don't transmit diseases and therefore we can release as many males as we like to gain control of the population without actually uh, impacting um, negatively on, on, on disease transmission. Uh, the, the combination of these factors, as well as some of the operational pieces, uh, really make this a, a, a unique method of control. So how were the uh, Oxitec mosquitoes developed? This slide is really hoping to give you an idea of how these uh, what the actual process is to generate these mosquitoes. Sometimes we get asked questions about, do you have to inject every single mosquito? You know, do you have to um, inject, um, you know, uh, all the different strains uh, and all the different individuals? Well, the answer is we don't it, it, it have to inject each individual. This is a, a strain of mosquitoes that we've made and they're generated at the outset by injecting DNA into eggs. So there's a very, very fine needle uh, that's used to inject the DNA into the mosquito egg. And that DNA is then picked up by the egg uh, and, uh, and, and integrated. Um, and as the eggs hatch, some of those individuals, a percentage of those individuals will actually incorporate that DNA and, um, and, and exhibit the characteristics or the phenotype that we're looking for. So then it's a case of selecting the ones that have that phenotype, uh, rearing them up and characterizing them. Um, and then we have potentially a candidate product strain. That allows us to rear them uh, using the uh, antibiotic that we have uh, in the laboratory. Uh, and then they just behave as, as male and female. I'll come on to that shortly. Um, but that allows us to, to just maintain the strain in a similar manner to um, conventional mosquito rearing, 
and we don't have to re-inject. We've got the strain available and we can use it from that point forward. So what's in those mosquitoes? Well, we have two safe, commonly used additional genes. And other than that, those mosquitoes, those Aedes aegypti, are, 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 are essentially just like wild types. The two genes that we've inserted, as I said, were, were commonly used and, and safe, uh, non-toxic, non-allergenic. The first is a uh, what we call a self-limiting gene. Uh, TTAV uh, is its more scientific name. Um, but it's a self-limiting gene and that just means that it kills the females um, in most cases sometimes uh, in in these products we like to kill both male and females uh, and so we can choose and have this sex linked or have it uh, efficient against both sexes but for Aedes aegypti it only kills females uh, it's only expressed in females that protein is produced in females and the females die at a very young stage and that allows us to control populations uh, and males are unaffected and just carry that gene and pass it on to their offspring and i'll come on to that shortly in the next couple of slides the second gene uh, uh, encodes for a marker it's a fluorescent protein uh, that's made by the insect and that just allows us to track and trace um, and uh, the next slide We'll show you, tell you a little bit more about that. In fact, uh, this one is the self-limiting gene and we'll talk about the marker one next. So this self-limiting gene, as I mentioned, it only incur occurs in females. Females can't survive when they get one copy of this gene from their father. Uh, they, they don't get any, of course, from their mother and they get one copy from their father and that's enough to kill 100% of female offspring that inherit that particular gene. As I mentioned, males are unaffected, but they do carry the gene. So it's not expressed and the protein isn't created in males, but they do carry the gene and that allows them to, to pass that gene on to their offspring. This sex-linked combination is really effective for this particular species because it allows male-only production just by withdrawing the antibiotic. So in the laboratory, an antibiotic is used to ensure that the uh, protein uh, isn't produced in sufficient quantities in females to cause lethality. Um, but when that antibiotic is taken away, uh, the females die. So all we have to do is remove the antibiotic, the females die, and it leaves us with a pure male cohort uh, for release. That enables male only release without any tech male only release without quality control supervising a mechanical sexing system for example um, uh, low tech releases with a high tech product um, and it has revolutionized the way this product can be used because now it can be used by members of the public by vector control authorities um, and uh, and that really makes it accessible to everybody once it's through the regulatory system. Of course, um, because it works on females only, uh, those females are reduced and that suppresses the population. And then uh, that in turn reduces the risk of being bitten by an infectious female. We've been around for a long time, as I mentioned, 20 plus years, over 10 years in the field. And uh, for this second generation male mosquito 5034, we've released well over 20 million now into the environment and we've never had a female produced. So the fluorescent marker, and uh, you can see three pictures there um, down at the bottom of the larva, the pupae and the adults and how this marker looks. There's a wild type on the left uh, for the larva and the uh, pupa, and you can see the fluorescent oxytec on the right-hand side of each. Um, it, it really is, uh, you know, a very simple process uh, to pop these under the microscope with a particular wavelength of light, light and, uh, and identify those that have been parented uh, by an oxytec male. And uh, that doesn't matter whether it's a released insect or a multi-generational, fourth, fifth, sixth generation insect in the field. They all express, if they're parented by an octatech male, 
they express this fluorescent marker and we can identify them. And that allows us to do two things really. Firstly, to track the Oxitec mosquitoes. So we can, we can literally put traps out and we can catch them and see where they go and how long they live. Um, and it also allows us to demonstrate that once we've stopped releases, that they've disappeared from the environment. And from a regulatory perspective, uh, that's been a very, very useful tool as we go through the R&D and the product development process. And um, that last bullet there, Oxitec male mosquitoes pass the gene to the offspring. So uh, even though they uh, don't express that self-limiting phenotype that I mentioned in the last one, Oxitec males do express uh, the DS red protein. So we can identify males and females in the same way. Okay, so we've got some fluorescent, we, we've got some fluorescing self-limiting male mosquitoes and um, and they get released. They're carrying those two genes, uh, but they get released after being pr produced at large scale. Uh, we produce them in a facility and uh, uh, generate lots and lots of eggs. Those eggs are then shipped out to a particular location and then they're placed in boxes. Water is added and uh, with uh, um, a little bit of de development time, usually around about one to two weeks, uh, those male mosquitoes start to emerge from the boxes and fly off and disperse in search of wild females to mate with. Once those males find uh, the females, and there is really nothing better at finding a, a female mosquito than a male mosquito, uh, they mate and, uh, and then there's a <clears throat> mixture of males and females in the progeny all the females will die and the males will be unaffected, i.e. you know, most of them will survive. It's one of the beauties of this technology uh, that we can do these releases uh, so easily. Uh, but another one is the fact that the males go out and do the searching for us. Uh, vector control municipalities, uh, Mustafa and his team when we get there um, and others, they don't have to go in and knock on everybody's door. Uh, they don't have to spray in and around homes. Um, they can release this in the road, uh, in the street, where it's accessible, and the mosquitoes will go off in search of those females and permeate the environment and ensure that the application is successful. This particular slide, quite a busy one, um, but is intended to show you the dilution effect. Um, so you have a the top line there, a male mosquito on the left, an Oxitec male mating with a wild female, uh, just as in the previous slide. And in that first generation of insects below, all of the males and all of the females will carry a single copy of the two genes, uh, particularly in this case of the self-limiting gene. Um, and as a consequence, all the females on the right hand side die and all the males on the left hand side will survive. Those male first generation insects can then go and mate more pest females. So when they mate with a, a, a wild female, only half of their progeny, a male progeny, will carry the gene and, uh, and, and they will go to pass, to pass that on to subsequent generations. And half of their female progeny will die in the same way as, they, as, the, as all of the progeny did from the first generation. So you end up with a half-life kind of effect diluting out over subsequent generations. And within about five to 10 generations, uh, all of those insects uh, are gone uh, once, insect, one, once releases have stopped and we end up with uh, no more Oxitec mosquitoes uh, in the environment. So it gives us some residual activity, allows us to get, you know, at least, uh, you know, at least mul multiple effects uh, from all of those progeny uh, over and above the ones that are released. Uh, but typically, you know, as much as 50 uh, insects, um, uh, male progeny coming off uh, one of those males. So a real boost to performance from those multi-generational males at the same time at no long-term persistence. And so it's particularly uh, good for, you know, uh, for, from a regulatory and an environmental perspective.
A knock-on benefit uh, from the multi-generational males is the dilution of insecticide resistance. Now, this is, you know, a concept which is not so difficult to grasp, um, but the multi-generational males uh, that mate with um, that mate with pest females produce some males that carry the self-limiting gene but they also produce some males that don't. And those males will contain some of the other background genes uh, of, of our males uh, as those genes start to segregate. And those genes include those for insecticide susceptibility. Our Aedes aegypti are selected at the outset for insecticide susceptibility. And so we don't carry any uh, significant insecticide resistance genes. That means that it doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a larvicide for a mosquito, whether it's an adulticide, whether it's a BT crop for agriculture, um, we can integress or, or introduce susceptibility into that uh, wild population just by releasing our males and letting them mate freely uh, with the pest population. The combination of reducing the pest population down and suppressing the population down to very low levels with that um, with that uh, introgression of susceptibility means that we can actually get very significant dilution and that reduces the level of resistance out there uh, and and can even reintroduce susceptibility and make insecticides or other control agents that were uh, once ineffective make them effective again and certainly build the foundations for a very um, very robust integrated management strategy. So it's what you might call synergy uh, with, with chemical insecticides or chemical control um, because the combination of using uh, the biological uh, oxytech mosquitoes as well as the insecticides uh, can have a, a a multiplicative effect uh, rather than uh, two you know two separate additive effects it's uh, it's it's what you would call true synergy and is a an exceptional benefit uh, particularly for resistance management and sustainability of these products Here are some results. Uh, you can see in the blue circles on the left-hand side, our old product, 513A, and then in 2018, we switched to the new product, uh, which is 5034, or, um, um, you know, this is the one that only uh, affects female offspring. It allows us to release in boxes uh, with low-tech releases done by practically anybody, um, so we can, literally ship these out to members of the public as we've been doing in Brazil since uh, since last year while we went commercial um, and people can do these releases on their own uh, put the boxes in their backyard and protect their family in their homes our largest intervention uh, was a multi-year um, four-year intervention in Paris Acaba, uh, where we protected 65,000 people uh, but we've also done some pretty big projects now uh, with our new Mosquito 5034. And um, you can see there uh, our commercial launch uh, in Brazil as our most recent 21-2022 um, uh, uh, achievement. The pie charts at the top there, 92, 93, 94%, um, they were taken um, after Oxitec Mosquito projects in Brazil. Uh, there, the public were polled uh, post-project to see if uh, people wanted the project to continue or expand. And there was almost universal uh, support for the product and for the projects. Uh, people really felt protected uh, when the mosquitoes were flying, the male mosquitoes were flying, and they, they, they knew they were there. And then when, when they were taken away, uh, they suddenly felt unprotected. And uh, not only were we seeing this, this, this in the polls, but... Uh, the local vector control authorities were getting lots of phone calls saying, what are you going to do now? You know, because you've taken our males away. And uh, it was great to see that, you know, there really is a positive effect there. Uh, more uh, data here, 97%, a couple of those from Indachuba. 
Um, these are a, a, a subsequent project where polling after the project uh, again showed very, very strong support. We use all sorts of methods uh, to deliver information to the public, um, but it's not just about informing. It's about integrating, it's about including, it's about listening. And so we spend a lot of time uh, working with Mustafa and his team at the moment uh, as, a, as a precursor to a potential project in California, uh, knocking on doors, uh, speaking to people, uh, listening to their concerns, listening to their questions, uh, providing information as well, um, but making sure that, that they, they, they feel included because at the end of the day, they are pretty much the most important component of these projects. Um, the mosquitoes themselves, of course, are important too, but without the public support, without the public um, will, uh, these projects just can't, so, can't get off the ground and succeed. Um, it really is a, a combined effort uh, between ourselves at Oxitec, between our partner, in this case, Delta uh, Mosquito and Vector Control Di District, and the public as well. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, it really is a, a partnered effort, a, a team effort, and, uh, and the regulators also uh, can get involved and uh, offer support and advice as well to help, us, uh, to, to help us work through those projects in a successful way. And so how about commercialization? We, I mentioned we'd commercialized in Brazil and, and what does this product look like when we commercialize? Uh, the, the slide here uh, shows some pictures you know, across the portfolio. So there's a couple of agricultural slides uh, and the, the, the picture at the top there is, is three Oxitec field workers uh, working in Brazil, uh, taking fall armyworm uh, out for release at a, uh, in, uh, on a, in a, in a maize crop. Um, Bottom left picture is a good one, is an interesting one because it shows one of our apps. What we've done with this product is add a, um, a digital app that comes with it. So you can download it, it, it registers your device, it sends you alerts so that you know how to manage that device, when to replace the eggs, when to add water, when to throw it away. It allows you to contact people to get support. It gives you information. Um, it, it really is trying to turn a, a what is conventionally uh, a, a, you know, a, a tool for area-wide management, um, a biological product for area-wide management of a, of a pest by a specialist into something that can, can be used very locally um, by the public themselves, by the end user themselves. Um, it gets ordered online, shipped out to your home, deliver it to the house, you can put it in your backyard, you can put it in, in, around your business uh, yourself um, and use the app to make sure that that's managed effectively. And, uh, and, and, and then that really um, transforms uh, the availability of the product, makes it accessible and uh, gets it out there where it's needed to the, in the hands of the people that really require it and doesn't doesn't rely on on the municipalities to provide that product for their for their people the people can buy directly so uh, we talked about some of the technology benefits earlier on and um, uh, here are some of those that really make it operationally effective um, that genetic sexing uh, that we talked about earlier on really um although it makes it very very efficient of course you know that brings down costs ultimately that brings down costs and those costs savings can be passed on to the customer and make this kind of product very affordable there's very strong quality control behind these products uh, and uh, that's very important because we need these products to be performing well for our customers and if they weren't then the customers would be satisfied and the product would fail so it's it's imperative that we have a very good product that is consistently producing the right number of mosquitoes in this case at the right uh, at the right speed and there's a lot of development and quality control that goes into that to ensure that that product is in typical top condition um, when it arrives with the customer. 
Um, production is super efficient because of the male only production. That means that we're not wasting time producing females. Uh, we're as efficient as we can be. It's flexible in terms of its production uh, because we can build uh, facilities anywhere in the world and then we can ship those eggs out. So at the moment we, we have a facility in the UK where we produce eggs and they ship to Florida, for example. But we could we could have a facility in China. We could have a facility in Brazil. Um, it's a very flexible uh, model in that sense. Uh, effective dosing, uh, we have uh, up to 200 acres uh, for some of our agricultural pests, um, but typically up to around about 50 meters of flight distance on average uh, for our mosquitoes. So that means we just need one box, potentially one box per hectare, which is a pretty good rate and makes operations very easy for the, for, for the user. We have a, a long shelf life for Aedes aegypti, allowing those products, those eggs to be shipped around uh, the world and then for them to sit on the shelf in a warehouse uh, and used at the right time. Uh, very important when you're trying to make something accessible and deployable um, in, in the real world. It's simple to deploy, as we've mentioned. Um, it really is a case of putting a box out, filling it with water, a just at water approach, the eggs and the diet for those uh, larvae are within the box. And then once it's expired, uh, the, the internal cartridge is replaced uh, with new eggs and new food. And away we go again with more water. And as mentioned, it, it's safe and non-toxic. And so uh, it doesn't require safety equipment, doesn't require gloves and a lab coat uh, to, 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 to apply this. Uh, it really can be done by anybody uh, with no requirement for safety material. Okay, well, I hope that's given everybody a flavor of um, the product from pretty much from, from R&D all the way through to commercial. And, and that was the intention here, hopefully sparking a few questions. Um, please do get your questions in to, uh, to, to the chat. Uh, these can be questions relating to the product itself, of course, or how it's used. And, and as mentioned, you know, products, uh, questions relating to operations or to, 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 to its use in California, most welcome as well, uh, so that uh, uh, we can answer those for you. If we do run out of time, uh, don't worry, uh, you can send us questions at info.architect.com and we'll reply by email. And we'll also be publishing the webinar afterwards on YouTube, as well as our websites. OK, and with that, um, we will move to questions. Um, I'm going to switch screens and I will Pull up a few of the questions. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> um, we have at the moment uh, just eight questions in, so please get some more in. Uh, we'll answer these uh, in time for sure. We've got about 20 minutes to go, uh, but please don't hesitate to put some more into the chat box uh, if you if you have any. Um, Mustafa, first question is going to go to you. Um, is Delta Mosquito Vector Control District seeing a large population of Aedes aegypti so far this season compared to previous years? Uh, a great question. We're still, we're still collecting, we're still sampling and surveying. The numbers are increasing. Uh, as far as I don't know exactly if we have surpassed last season, but the numbers are, I can see they are increasing. Always from July on to at the end of August, even September, we get more, more numbers increasing. So as of now, I would say about the same, nothing, you know, I have not really checked to see if we have more this so far up to now till for last year, but about the same. So, and I, I can see, Every, every week, the numbers are increasing, and especially with this incre increased uh, hot temperature, the development of the, the Aedes aegypti will develop fast because, you know, 
the water is warm, warmer, it's hotter, and uh, and they don't require a lot of water. They just need little small contain containers in the front yard or backyard. So the to answer the question completely, do I know exactly as you, the numbers are higher or lower? I would say they're, they're about the same because we still haven't really, uh, we're just in the middle of the season, approaching the middle. We're just fin finishing July, but the numbers are increasing. I have to go back and see what the numbers were at this time last year versus this year. But they are increasing. The numbers are yeah. high, going higher. Yeah, th thanks, Mustafa. <clears throat> That's great. Um, next question I'll take. Um, would Oxitec have to pursue a separate federal approval process to use its technology in other insects? The answer is yes. Um, so this is a mating-based technology we need a separate federal approval for an experimental use or commercial use eventually for each different product. So in the case of Aedes aegypti, Ox5034 is our product and we have a federal approval uh, for that to do experimental work, uh, an experimental use permit it's called, and that data uh, can go towards a commercial approval. But we would have to do the same process again if we had another product, be that you know another mosquito, be that an agricultural insect, uh, or something uh, further afield. Um, in addition to that, I'd add that we would need also, you know, that we also need approvals for each country. So an approval in the U.S., for example, wouldn't transport to Brazil, you know, and Brazil wouldn't transport to the U.S. You can transport international data uh, to help gain a regulatory approval, but you can't typically transport the regulatory approval unless there's a special agreement between the countries. So, so typically it's uh, new uh, registrations, new applications and registrations for each product in each geography. Um, next question. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I think either of us could contribute here, uh, Mustafa. Um, so um, I'll, I'll start with 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 uh, I'll start with it myself, but then I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to you. The question is: Could Oxitex technology replace traditional chemical pesticides at large scales? And what I would say uh, is that um, you know we don't see any technology as a silver bullet you know, as the one technology that will be used solely in all situations. Um, most situations, you know, are different uh, in some way, you know, and case by case, uh, it might be that populations are high, populations are low, but there's, there's strong levels of disease. Maybe populations are high and there's little disease. Maybe it's, um, you know, an economically difficult location, maybe the environment is difficult. Um, so everywhere's a little bit different. Um, and sometimes a biological approach like Oxitex is the best way forward. Um, you know, sometimes it may be more efficient to use a, a different approach, at least for certain times, maybe when, you know, the, it's the start of the season or as a precursor to uh, a biological approach. Um, one thing I would say is that whatever approach is used, um, preventative ones typically are, you know, are more favorable to a curative one. Uh, one that stops the problem starting in the first place is, you know, tends to be, um, you know, more desirable than one that waits till the problem happens and tries to fix it. Um, Mustafa, I'll hand over to you, uh, you know, as an operational expert and someone who uses all sorts of uh, mosquito control tools. Uh, that, that's a great question, and uh, you've answered it pretty good. I would like to add that uh, for mosquito control and vector control, the best solution is to do everything integrated. You have to integrate every tool that you have at your disposal. In this case, yes, pesticides are, are part of the solution, but they're not all the solution. And if we can have a solution a technique like uh, architect that has right now, in the future using, which is part of biological control, it's better to use a mosquito against another mosquito than, you know, because 
as you said earlier, the male mosquito will find the female mosquito better than human beings. You know, I mean, they they have to mate. They have to. That's part of the of the nature. And if you have a male mosquito that has a pesticide, think about it. They, they don't have a pesticide, but they have a self-limiting gene, which they're using to, you know, to give it to the female mosquito and the female mosquito will not reproduce. That's an ingenious way of reducing the number of mosquitoes. Because in, with pesticides, the problem with pesticides, I don't want to say they're all bad or anything. They, of course, mosquitoes develop resistance. And when they develop resistance, that pesticide that you're using is no longer effective anymore. So you have to find go find another one. So with the biological control, with the Oxitec tool, it could become, we don't know for sure, but you know we, we, that's what's going to happen in the future. Hopefully this technique will not eliminate or eradicate completely, but will reduce, will have, will give us over 90% of, of a reduction of female mosquitoes, which is better than when you kill them by pesticide and then a year later they develop resistance and you have more mosquitoes out there. So I personally, professionally integrated mosquito management. And this is part in the integrated tool because it's an augmented tool that we can use in addition to whether it's a, a larvicide or a pesticide or educational outreach and even using a mosquito fish and so forth. So. It, it's a tool that we can use. It's innovative. To me, it's something that I definitely would like to, to use and see how it works. And hopefully in the future, we could be using it here in Visalia or anywhere in the United States. Great question. So. Thanks, Gustavo. Great answer. Um, next question uh, I'll take. Uh, it's a, a, an Oxitec focused one. Uh, how long will it take Oxitec to produce the number of mosquitoes needed for its proposed project in California? Well, I mentioned earlier on that we have a, several months worth of shelf life uh, for these for these eggs, uh, and, but I, I'll talk a little bit about the process of producing them. Um, it's more like a, a, a it's more like a, a conveyor belt, if you like. Um, uh, so we produce the eggs back at base in the UK, uh, in this case. Uh, but then those eggs need to be conditioned. It takes uh, a good number of days to condition those eggs once they've been laid till they're ready for transportation. There's quality control that happens on each of those batches of eggs. So each batch is then sampled and samples of those eggs are hatched out and um, tested for, for, the, for the particular characteristics that we're looking for. Um, that allows us to batch guarantee every single delivery. Um, it allows us to be fully compliant with the regulators. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, it allows us to ensure that we've got really good um, uh, quality in the product and a very consistent quality in the product. Once uh, th th those tests have been done and eggs have been conditioned, uh, then we can start to ship the eggs. And so if we've got a shelf life of several months, you know, it might take us a few, a couple of weeks to actually get those eggs uh, laid and conditioned, batch tested and out of the door. Uh, so that leaves us with, um, you know, still a good couple of months uh, for the logistics to get the eggs to a certain place and then uh, for delivery uh, and use uh, to, uh, at site. So, it's more a conveyor belt, if you like, of, of, of production uh, that would supply a project like the one in California. And we would be shipping eggs regularly. So typically, you know, on a monthly or every other month basis, we would have a fresh shipment of eggs that comes out and then we would use those for a month or two and then move on to the next shipment. So it, it's, that's the process, as opposed to producing all the eggs for the project at the start, we produce continually right the way through the project. Uh, next question, Mustafa, is one for yourself. Uh, if Oxitex technology were already approved for use in the US, how would you envision mosquito and vector control districts incorporating it into the broader vector control strategy? That's that's another great question. And I, I always believe in innovative control methods and this is this is an innovative one and once 
data shows that it works. And uh, hopefully, you know, when we collaborate with you and see the results, and the results are, are good, excellent, and we know that it's working. And of course, it's up to EPA to, in the future, in few years or so, can register it, approve it. And then of course we could be using it because for me professionally, if I see data showing that it is working, it's doing a good job, we can definitely use it as a, an augmented tool. And hopefully by then, you know, the tool will not be expensive because if it becomes uh, scalable down and affordable, not only the, you know, the public can be buying it, but we also will buy it and use it and together meaning together, meaning the public and ourselves using the, the product as an augmented tool, it will help. I could see it definitely if it becomes affordable and data shows that it works. So right now it, it is showing that it's working in Florida, but we have not done it yet in California. And I believe in data. I believe in results, seeing things, you know, working. And if it does, it will. De I will definitely promote it to be used in a, Delta mosquito and in other, you know, other mosquito con vector controls, I can promote it, but I have to see the data and I'm excited. And hopefully when uh, DPR, Department of P uh, Pesticide Regulations in California approves your product, and then hopefully we can do it uh, next summer and see what the data gives us. So I'm looking forward to it. Super, thanks Mustafa. Um, next question uh, I'll take, again, Oxitec uh, focused. Uh, does Oxitec's technology have applications beyond insects? Uh, I, I sort of um, touched on this earlier on in some of the slides, but um, it does. Uh, we, we have products uh, already uh, being developed for use in ticks. So uh, an arthropod still, but, but not an insect. Um, so ticks are one that we uh, are already looking at um you know it could be a louse or another arthropod that would, would that, that, that could work in this uh work with this technology should the biology lend itself um and and often you know it's it's a question of both biology and behavior or biology and ecology uh, as to whether you know it really is suited to this kind of product um, but in theory, you know, we could put this kind of um, technology into many different products. Um, and interestingly, you know, even, uh, you know, into, um, uh, you know, other, f uh, you know, other higher orders of, of organism, if you like, than, uh, than those discussed here. So, you know, in theory, you could put it into, you know, maybe a fish, maybe a, a small mammal as well at the moment uh, that's not the case um you know we're focused on insects um and arthropods for public health for our food security and for animal health um but that's not to say that it couldn't happen in the future um could oxytex technology be used for nuisance insects like other pest mosquitoes uh, yes it certainly could do um, and Mustafa, you might want to add here as well, I think. But, you know, as a company, we've focused on, you know, major challenges that are a real problem, you know, in large areas of the, of the planet. Um, grand challenges in public health uh, is, is, is one way of putting it. And so, you know, that's public health issues that's diseases uh at this point and uh, and we've talked about aedes and uh anopheles too for for malaria that we're also uh, looking to tackle um nuisance mosquitoes slightly different uh it would it could still work and of course some of those disease carrying mosquitoes are, are a nuisance too um but some nuisance mosquitoes you know are are local you know they may be native to the environment um, Aedes aegypti invasive, uh, Simonophily species invasive, uh, and so you know they present a slightly different challenge. Um, but for nuisance mosquitoes, um, it could still work in theory. Absolutely, it could. Um, but there are different implications when it comes to the environment, the food chain, etc. 
and uh, you know so some mosquitoes are produced in huge numbers, you know, and uh, and, and are really uh, you know nuisance biters through and through. Um, but does the biology and ecology lend itself to this kind of product? It certainly could, but it's a bit of a case by case, I think, because some mosquitoes are very different to others. Kevin, you want, to add, you want to add something? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the technology right now you are using for, uh, you know, mosquitoes that, that transmit diseases, but that doesn't mean, you know, the ecology and the biology of mosquitoes, even though they are varied, but they're similar in a way. A technique, I could see it working even in nuisance because especially in an area, for example, where people have salt marshes, and those mosquitoes are very, you know, they people hate them because they they might not carry a disease, but they bite fiercely, you know. And I could see the technology working in that, you know, finding again a, a self-limiting gene or some other genetic way of going after the the female mosquitoes and the males, maybe both, because uh, those nuisance mosquitoes, can, you know, they're not carrying disease, but people hate the bite. And some people react, uh, you know, differently and seriously. So, yes, I could see. I mean, the biology is there. It just needs the, the, the applications, the, the techniques have to be researched a little bit more and do more experiments, you know. And But that, but, but that doesn't mean they will not work, you know, unless you do the experimentation and find out if they do or not. Right now, it's still early because they haven't been done. Uh, against a nuisance, but I could see them working for that too. And and remember, you're already going into ticks, you know, I mean, and also soon you could go into coliquides, or you could, I could see them go, going into, in mm. Central America, I mean, kissing bugs, you know, I mean, that's a, a Chagas disease, you know, that's a, that's something that people, uh, you know, fear in Central America, South America. So the sky is the limit. I mean, you guys have just hit the, you know, the, the you just started so if this works with you know with the disease carrying mosquitoes i don't see why it would not work in nuisance but it would, would require a little bit additional and also flies you know think about you know like uh, not, not only house flies but uh stable flies horn flies you know pe those uh you know very very uh, pestiferous uh you know, insects that uh, attack people and bite people, both males and females. So, so I could see it. This is a, you know, an introduction to the genetic method of uh, controlling uh, not only mosquitoes but other uh, insects and arthropods that affect us. So, thanks, Mustafa. Uh, we're on to the last question, and um, the last question uh, is, uh, I'll I'll start. I think that's probably the right way. Uh, it is Oxitec focused. Uh, the question says, uh, in Brazil, you said it was being sold commercially. If I order some online, what gets delivered to my door? Um, good question. I, I like it. And, uh, and so, you know, um, it's exactly how we do it at the moment in Brazil is they're ordered online. Um, you know, in, in due course, we could go retail as well, but they're ordered online at the moment. And typically we have a subscription model. Uh, the durable outer case gets delivered to your door and then you get eggs on a subscription model every month. A new packet of eggs comes to your door and, uh, and you can put that in for the next month's worth of deployments. Um, those eggs come with a plastic bucket, if you like, a plastic liner that goes inside the durable and, uh, and it contains food, eggs, and a little water conditioner. Uh, and so that package arrives on a sub subscription basis uh, every month and you just swap them out and uh, use the app to tell you how exactly when to change. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a just a water system. And then you pull out the, the, the plastic liner, pop it into the refuse and replace it with the fresh one. Um, so it's a pretty simple product uh, when it comes to deployment, uh, but certainly something a bit unique. And so, um, uh, you know, we're pretty proud of it at the moment. We, we went commercial in Brazil in uh, November last year, and uh, we've already generated, you know, a lot of customers um, in Sao Paulo. And uh, some of those customers are 
uh, homeowners, but some of them are also small business owners too. And we're also talking with municipalities, of course, and releasing in uh, in Indachuba, in the city of Indachuba at the moment. Okay, well, uh, 50, we're bang on schedule, uh, Mustafa. So that was a pretty good job. And uh, may I thank you profusely uh, for, for, for coming on and answering questions so well. But uh, most importantly, thank you all for listening. Uh, really enjoyable. Uh, our next webinar will be in about a month's time. Uh, so please do come back and join for that one. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, if you've got any questions that you didn't get to ask, please do feel free to send them to info at architect.com and we'll answer those um, by email. Um, thanks again and uh, see you next time.